Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we will be talking about an update from the 2024 presidential race. Not a huge update, but it does mean so much. It does symbolize so much more than what we see on the surface. So it has been revealed uh, from a Trump campaign staffer. He has told volunteers that the national uh, Trump campaign, Team Trump, has determined that the state of New Hampshire, once a very much a battleground state in this election, is no longer a battleground and this just goes to show how this election is so much different from 2016 you'll see or maybe you won't but I don't, there's a lot of uh rather biased election channels that will have um that will have you know donald trump winning uh by more in 2024 than he did in 2016 there are a bunch of channels where you know in uh, where in their predictions they have that you know his margin his electoral margin is higher in 2024 then it was in 2016. This proves exactly that that cannot be possible because when you look back at New Hampshire in the 2016 election, Hillary Clinton only won it by 0.37%. If Trump was doing better or even matching where he, uh, how he did in 2016, then I'll tell you right now, he would not be pulling out of the state of New Hampshire. He wouldn't be saying it's no longer a battleground state when it was the closest state that went to Hillary Clinton in the 2016 presidential election. So, again, Trump campaign pulling out of the state of New Hampshire, saying it is no longer a battleground state. They will no longer be focusing at all on the state of New Hampshire. Now, this is a huge change. And I do want to say before we get into this, this is not big news. This is not big news at all. I had New Hampshire going likely Republican. Um, I don't know if my exact... Nope, that's not my prediction, so don't look at that. But uh, but New Hampshire has been going in Kamala Harris's direction for quite a while now since uh, you know since she launched her campaign. But it is... So we knew he wasn't going to win uh, New Hampshire. I have it going to her by about 6 to 7 percentage points right now. It won't even be that close. So obviously I get this. But this admission, you know, this they're admitting right here, it's clear in text, uh, in quotes, that, that they are saying a state like New Hampshire um, is out of reach and, you know, goes beyond New Hampshire, right? This is what I mean when I say it means more than just beyond New Hampshire. New Hampshire is a measly four electoral votes, but it goes well beyond. There are many other states like New Hampshire, and it just goes to show how much this race has changed uh, since Joe Biden dropped out of the race. For example, in the last polls before Biden dropped out of the race, the very last one, July, um, so this was, what, right after the debate, I guess? I thought the debate was in June, though. Um, I forget. I don't know. I have no perception of time anymore. But anyway, in the last polls before Biden dropped out of the race, we see even. It was 50, 50 well, not 50, 50, but 39, 40, basically even. Trump leading in New Hampshire. Biden plus four, Biden plus three, even. Now, for reference, Joe Biden won the state of New Hampshire by 7.4% in the 2020 election. So the Trump campaign, um, it wasn't just New Hampshire. It was Minnesota, polls show him leading. Virginia polls showed him leading. There, were, there was a poll in New Jersey that showed him leading, which he won by 16 in the last. New Mexico, Trump was le uh, leading, I think, in a couple polls. Maybe wrong on that. But this was a wide variety of states that had similar margins for Joe Biden um, in 2020. You know, these more bluer states, but they were looking incredibly competitive this time around, which basically sealed the deal. I mean, that it, there was reporting like that was why Biden ended up dropping out because, you know, the battlegrounds didn't look good. That was one thing. But the thing on top of that that really pushed him out was the fact that these blue states we're now in, you know, incredibly close battleground states. You know, he was really defending to win all of these states that he won handily in 2016, uh, and, or I mean 2020. So it was really, um, it, it, I remember, I, I really remember this, uh, the first polls, besides this one, um, but the first polls from the, uh, from UNH, the University of New Hampshire, these were literally like the first good polls after Biden dropped out and Harris announced her candidacy, and it was just New Hampshire and Maine. And when these polls were released, they got a lot of attention because we were expecting Kamala Harris to be this insanely weak candidate. And then, bam, right after she announces her candidacy, Biden drops out. She wins the state of New Hampshire in the head-to-head -head by 7%, and Maine was something like 9%. She was literally matching exactly 
Joe Biden's 2020 margin, 7 and 9, 7 in New Hampshire, 9 in Maine. And that was really a wake-up call, like, whoa, okay, Kamala Harris is not the candidate, not the weak candidate that we thought all along she was. She is a much stronger candidate than we had anticipated. So, uh, whoops. Um, so, you know, again, that was really the wake-up call, like, wow, this race has completely changed, and Kamala Harris is much stronger than we thought. So, the point is, Trump, uh, Team Trump, the Trump campaign, went from, you know, getting these blue states in this column, trying to flip these blue states, make blue states red for decades, you know, for years to come, right, an impact on, on future years, that was their, um, that was their aim for quite a while, and then it completely flipped, and th those first polls was the first indication of that. Now, it has gone from that to clearly, you know, he's pulling out of New Hampshire, it's clear that he is now just trying to win as many battleground states as he possibly can. He is on defense. Putting it simply, he was on offense. Now he has, he's on defense because Kamala Harris um, has the advantage right now. Donald Trump is the underdog. So now this race is much easier for Kamala Harris. After all, the safest of, sta of safe states. I mean, well, first of all, this was sort of the map of, um, of safe states or almost safe states when Biden was in the race. Disregard Harris and Walls. Think of it as Biden and Harris in that blue column there. Or blue row, what a blue box. Um, this was, you know, these were the safest states, and what Biden and Harris had to do was, you know, really try to defend these blue states like New Hampshire, Maine, New Mexico, uh, Minnesota, and Virginia. And you could just see how hard that is alone. That's five, or that's yeah, that's five uh, battleground states plus Nebraska second district that they had to defend. And then on top of that, they were aiming for Pennsylvania, Michigan, and Pennsylvania. It just wasn't going to happen. But now, New Mexico, safe under the Harris column. Virginia, safe under the Harris column. New Mexico, safe. I'm mean, not exactly safe. But very solidly under the Harris column, New, Ma uh, New Hampshire and Maine as well. Uh, as well as Nebraska's 2nd District. And then you've got... Now, you're expanding the map, right? Now, um, well, not expanding the map, but, you know, expanding on where Joe Biden was, right, previously in the race. Because now, you know, of course, you're looking at the Rust Belt. But then you're looking at, you know, possibly keeping Georgia, uh, possibly keeping Nevada and Arizona, expanding the electoral map from 2020 to North Carolina, possibly making a play in Texas, and then the election would really be over. So, you know, that makes all the difference, right? Expanding the map, um, you know, you know, expanding on where Joe Biden was, where he would possibly um, be in the race if he were still in the race. So thank you all for watching this video. Hope you took something away from it. If you didn't, that's okay. But again, thank you all for watching. I'll see you all next time.